we will have to check the inputs after completing the modeling of piping. So I have to keep all the input documents ready for checking. First one is seismometric drawings. So we say open the isometric drawings. First we need to check the global coordinates. You see here the icon is the wave or set coordinates. You see here X and Y and Z coordinates are there. So based on the north north direction in isometric they used to provide T coordinates north, east and elevation. So we need to enter all the three coordinates based on the Caesar axis. In Caesar axis you see this. This is the Caesar axis. So your north direction means that is minus X. And our easing is minus Z. And elevation is plus Y. So you need to give accordingly. See east is minus X. East is minus Z. 18 to 638. It is correct. And for north thing, 1656250, it is correct. And why? Elevation is 105910. So the coordinates, whatever entered, is correct. Next, you need to check the diameter and wall thickness. So from the first node, this is the first node, starting node. Here it, uh, uh, flanges are, well neck flanges there. That is F3 they provided. So go to item number 3, part number 3. That is 14 inch. So 14 inch, 355.6, it is correct. And thickness is 9.53 mm. So 9.53 mm, it is correct. And the material is pipe material A106 grade B. A106 grade B, it is correct. And we need to check the corrosion elements. So for corrosion elements, we need to check the document called piping material specification. So I have to open the document piping material specification. Uh, this is the particular document A to A is suspect. Corrosion elements is 1.5 mm. So, so whatever uh, they have entered is correct. And pipe density, pipe density automatically it will come based on the material and fluid density. Fluid density you have to take it from the critical line list. You see critical line list, yeah this is the line list updated. So here you see uh, the services uh, LP steam they provided, they have not provided any fluid density so for steam it will be lesser value so for cons conservative purpose we are considered 1000 kg per meter cube. Next is temperature. So temperature you can give up to 9 temperatures and pressure up to 9 pressures you can enter and hydro test pressure is one on time one pressure you can enter so generally temperature will be defined based on the stress design basis in general we'll consider t1 t2 t3 t1 as design temperature and t2 as operating temperature and t3 as minimum design temperature pressure will consider always one pressure that is design pressure and hydro test pressure it is design pressure into 1.5 we'll get a hydro test pressure Temperature. First is uh, so you need to check what is the line number. Uh, before that, you need to provide the line number. Here they have not given the line number. They have not assigned anything. So you have to enter the line number. You have to comment. Uh, the line number. Line number has to be provided. SL one four double one zero one. That is a line number. Here. SL. SL141101. So you have to you have to provide the line number. So SL141. 
zero one. So this is our line one four zero one. One four double one. Sorry, this is the line one four uh, double one. So the temperature it is given us design temperature two hundred. So T one is correct. So for uh, temperature you can check here. Temperature. You see. So for temperature you can check here T one. So you see all uh, all the lines three lines are there. All the three lines are two hundred degrees Celsius. So here you see all the three lines have two hundred degrees design temperature and operating temperature is one sixty. All the three lines have one sixty operating as operating temperature. T two. It is one sixty for all the lines. It is one sixty. Third one is uh, minimum design temperature. So here uh, design temperature uh, they have not provided any minimum design. In this case, they have not provided any minimum design temperature. So we have consider. Minus five as minimum design temperature based on the discussion with the client. So T three T three as minus five. Okay. Then you have to check the pressure. This is the one. Show pressure is the no pressure. P one P one is seventy three point seven five five seven five newton per square. So it is given as uh, design pressure is seven point five kg per meter cube, meter uh, kg per centimeter square. So seven point five into nine point eight one, seventy three point five seven five. Seventy three point five seven five is correct. That is design temperature. Then we select this arrow. Go to hydro pressure. Hydro pressure is one one. Zero point three six two five. That is into one point five. One one zero point three six two five. That is design temperature into one point five. So pressure also correct. Hydro pressure is correct. Then you can check uh, the insulation thickness. So uh, this is the uh, wall thickness, insulation density, and uh, fluid density, insulation density, pipe density, corrosion loads. Here you see this is insulation density. Insulation density is one thirty six point one five seven nine three. So this insulation density you will get from the insulation specification. So you have to refer the insulation specification document and get the details. So here uh, we didn't have the details, so we are consider mineral wool. You see, if you select mineral wool, so we have consider mineral wool in this project. Insulation thickness it will be given in line list or from the insulation specification. I uh, say insulation thickness. It is given as high H. That is hot insulation, and uh, uh, the thickness is forty five mm. So your uh, the thickness what you consider is forty five mm. That is the insulation thickness. So insulation density you have to refer it from insulation specification. So like this, you have to check all the input. So so far we have checked all the input, and uh, this elastic modulus to Poisson ratio automatically the it will be displayed based on your material. And code you have to select thirty one point three. If it is power piping, then you have to select thirty one point one. And uh, this is process piping, so we have to select thirty-one point three. So 
automatically all the values will be displayed sh1 this is auto lobal stress and this is ail strain automatically it will come this f1 and all it's not required that is uh, uh, stress range reduction factors okay and fluid density you can check the fluid density it is if it is uniform yeah so some sometimes the uh, people do mistake like uh, from up to this they used to consider fluid density different uh, fluid density after this maybe if they enter wrongly for example 10 so what will happen you can check now the fluid density changed you see i have so actually it should be a thousand but they entered wrongly so you need to correct this one like this you can check based on the uh, this icons so this is uh, milk tolerance wall thickness yeah you see the same same thing yeah you see it is uh, the wall thickness up to here is 9.53 after this t they used 9.525 so you need to check with respect to isometric drawings. Uh, insulation. Ah, this is a insulation thickness. So okay, insulation thickness is 45 mm. It's uniform throughout. So it, so we can we can cross check like this. Piping codes 31.3. If so mistake the by mistake they are given some uh, different values means you can easily identify. For example, <coughs> here instead of 31.3, somebody used 31.1 means so you can easily identify the mistakes. You see, so it is 31.1. So that means this is wrong, they have to correct it. And this is material, yeah. You can check the materials. A one or six grade B. So if you check like this, you can easily uh, catch some mistakes. And diameter, what is the diameter? Uh, in this, you can easily find. You see, this is 14 inch. After that, uh, some reducer is there, and then the size has been reduced to uh, 12 inch. <coughs> Sorry. Again, here after this T, the size has been increased to 16 inch. So like this, you can check all the things. Uh, wall thickness uh, already we have seen. Uniform load. And then you need to check the uniform loads and wind loads. Wind. So you see. So in order to activate uh, the wind load, you need to enter wind shape factor. This is based on your stress design basis. The stress design basis they use to provide the wind shape factor value. You see wind shape factor is 0.7 we have considered, so it is correct. And uniform loads, you have to enter the G values here diagonally. So this also you have to refer piping stress design basis. So if all the parameters are correct, then we will go, go for the load case editor. Okay. So there are a lot of things you need to check. Uh, one minute I will show you the checklist also for this. You see, I mean, we have our internal uh, checklist for Caesar model input. First coordinates, uh, global coordinates. It is uh, then, if any orientation change, then you need to update. Model the equipment with nozzle connection. Yeah, if my uh, nozzle uh, equipment is model, then you have to check the no nozzle connection. And unit file, design parameters. Yeah, and the special execution parameters you need to check, yes. So you see the environment, go to environment, special execution parameters. So in the special execution parameters, you have to check. First is ambient temperature. Ambient temperature, sometimes when ambient temperature uh, will change based on the site condition. Uh, 
So you have to refer the pipe stress design basis. Sometimes 5 degree or uh, sometimes 40 degree for UAE and uh, I mean Gulf countries. And the FRP coefficient when you are using uh, non-metallic lines then you have to update this value. Otherwise not required. And these are all uh, completely for FRP lines. You set north direction. So default value is minus x. You see default value is minus x as north. If you want to change, you can change. And vertical, uh, vertical as y axis. That if you want to change as z axis vertical, you have to tick this one. So you will get z axis as vertical. You see, if you want to change, you just click OK. So your model will get changed. You see, z axis as vertical. So that depends on the client requirement, you can change. And uh, board on effect, uh, that and all not required for this. Board on effect, it will be mentioned in your stress design basis. And thermal bowing temperature, these are all for uh, LNG lines and FRP lines. And liberal stress allowable. This liberal stress allowable always, you should, uh, you should not own this one. So you have to leave blank. For high temperature lines, you have to use this liberal stress allowable. So while checking the output, I will explain you what is liberal stress allowable. Okay. And then bend angle and radius, you see, and uh, rigid weights, yeah. So all valve weights, flange weight and other uh, spectacle blinds, all weights needs to be checked as per the pipe data pro or uh, from the valve GE. And uh, when a settlement and all, then you see, OD, or this and all we have seen material properties. Okay, this and all I, th I think already we have covered. Okay, these are the minimum things we have to check. And uh, regarding supports, support you have to check properly. So for support, so initially we will run with uh, plus y, rest support only. And this uh, coefficient of friction you need to check based on your stress design basis. Uh, if you are using Teflon fed, then you have to use 0.1 and this is for steel to steel, it is 0.3. And some projects they used to provide 0.4 steel to steel in some clients, not, not, not all the clients. Okay. And then support yeah, with uh, gap 0 mm. Uh, for example, if any guides are used, so you see this is node number 620, rest plus y, rest and guide. So here you should not enter any gap. Without gap, you can do the analysis. Then only uh, this will not be a realistic, but uh, for a uh, conservative approach, you are maintaining 0 mm gap. If you want to enter 0, you can enter 0 also. Yeah, not an issue. Both, are, both will get same results. And uh, lines consider existing. This one all okay. Note case editor. Okay. Okay, we'll see. So these are the major inputs. So to be checked okay thank you